A very good morning to everyone. Thank you very much for the opportunity to engage, albeit via a screen. My apologies for not being here in person. I am, in fact, in Cape Town doing an opening address at the Planning Africa Conference. Um, at the opening of the recent summit, the Job Summit, President Cyril Ramaphosa stressed, and I quote, unemployment is the greatest challenge facing our country at this moment in its history, close quote. He then went on to add, I quote again, unemployment diminishes our ability to eradicate poverty, tackle inequality and improve the lives of the working class and poor. It has a devastating effect on families and communities, eroding people's dignity and contributing to social problems like poor health, poor education outcomes, substance abuse and crime. He went on to say that the extreme unemployment in this country is the product of an economy that for several decades has been starved of any meaningful investment in its human capital, where most people have been denied the opportunity to own assets or develop skills. The structure of the economy, which was built on the extraction of minerals, where ownership and control are highly, highly concentrated, remains largely untransformed. As a result, the declining of the mining industry and manufacturing has cost the country millions of jobs and much economic capacity. Low levels of growth in recent years has undermined our efforts to overcome the economic legacy of apartheid." Close quote. One response to these realities are the public employment programs launched by government. One of these programs is the Community Work Program, or CWP. CWP is a community-driven, government-funded program with the objective of reducing the impact of unemployment in areas of greatest socioeconomic need. At the end of March 2018, 266,762 actual and 304,567 cumulative participants benefited from CWP. The CWP was initiated by the second economic strategy project and initiative of the presidency located in the trade and industrial policy strategies or TIPS, a policy research NGO. Implementation of a pilot program to test the approach began in 2007 under the auspices of a partnership between the presidency and the Department of Social Development. With donor funding from the Employment Promotion Program, the pilot phase was implemented in four local areas, namely Mansiville, Bokfontein, Alfredenzor, and Sekukuni. The EPP reference group included representatives from government, i.e. the Presidency and the Department of Labor, Labor, represented by Kwasatu, and business represented by BUSA, Business Unity South Africa. It was funded by the Department for International Development, Southern Africa, or DFID, SA. After 2011, the CWP has been implemented by implementing agents on behalf of the Department of Cooperative Governance within the Ministry of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. The Community Work Program provides an employment safety net by providing participants with a predictable number of days of work per month, enabling them to supplement their existing li livelihoods and affording them basic income security through work. CWP seeks to engage participants in useful work projects, particularly in the poorest and most marginalized communities, targeting key populations such as women, youth and the disabled. The program is targeted at unemployed and or underemployed youth of working age, including those whose livelihood activities are insufficient to lift them out of poverty. The CWP does not replace government social grants program, but rather supplements it. What makes the CWP different is that it is also a community program which must improve the area and the quality of life of the people living there. This includes fixing community assets such as schools, road and parks, and setting up food gardens. It also includes training people. CWP has a presence in all local and metropolitan municipalities and is implemented at, the lo at a local level in a site which is generally comprises a community and is designed to employ a minimum of 1,000 people per site 
for two days a week, eight days a month, 100 days a year. The direct benefit is that there is an improved financial well-being provided by stipends as well as CWP activities focusing on social upliftment and violence prevention. The program also builds social cohesion, creating opportunities for active citizenship and so social cohesion. An important study by the Center for the Study of Violence and Reconciliation shows that the prevention of violence and crime is an important benefit of CWP. More than 70% of CWP participants are women, many of them with young children. One factor that can increase the likelihood that children will develop an orientation towards aggressive behavior is where parents themselves are stressed as a resu result of their financial difficulties. CWP participants receive a stable, although small income. This can enable them to better manage their households and reduce uncertainty in their lives. This in turn is likely to reduce the stress that parents experience, making home environments happier and more stable. As a result, CWP wages themselves may have a primary violence and crime prevention reduction benefits. The CWP does not have an explicit crime and violence prevention agenda, and according to this CSVR research, participants in some sites say that the CWP should not do safety work, as it may place the participants in danger, and crime prevention should be the responsibility of the police. Yet, CWP sites are located in marginalized communities with generally high rates of crime and violence. The participants note that children in their communities from early on are exposed to incidents of violence along with substance abuse, both on area streets and in their very own households. They say that it is hard for children and young people not to be pulled into violence. The CSVR research shows that in these environments, CWP participants end up engaging in activities that indirectly and at times directly address violence and crime. The CSVR has done some excellent research that further indicates that the main benefit identified by participants is that CWP enables them to work close to home. This cuts the cost and the safety risks of transport to work which would otherwise usually be located outside their communities. It also allows participants to keep an eye on their households and to respond to the needs of the family members at home on short notice. As early as 2013, partners such as GIZ, uh, VCP and Seriti explored ideas on how to weave safety into the DNA of CWP. As a result of that, the Inclusive Violence and Crime Prevention Program was started and it's a joint initiative by South African and, gov and German governments that promotes a systemic approach towards preventing violence and crime, combining the strengths and the skills of actors across many different sectors. This focus was based on the common understanding that a functional social system of communities free from violence and crime is essential for local development and social cohesion and vice versa. It's in this context that safety is seen as a human right and a public good that need to be, needs to be protected. Primary cri crime prevention refers to activities that are intended to address the causes of violence or crime. Primary prevention programs often focus on risk factors that cause violence. Children and young people, especially in poor communities, encounter many of these risk factors that are associated with an increased likelihood of participation in violence and crime. Examples of CWP participants' primary crime prevention efforts are early childhood development, care work in child-headed households, and support work at schools. Recreational activities and mentoring with children and youth can have a similar effect. Primary prevention extends into participants' own households as participants note that earning a wage through CWP allows them to provide a more stable home for children and youth. Working close to home helps them monitor children's activities and work with the CWP provides them 
with new skills for addressing risk factors in their own families. In some sites, C the CWP does direct violence prevention. One approach is providing advice and information at local police stations. Participants monitor victims and other community members to access resources for coping with domestic violence, violence against women, child abuse and gang-related youth violence. Another approach is organizing marches, rallies and public education events to raise awareness about different forms of violence, how they affect the community and how they can be addressed. In 2016, the CWP established a partnership with the CSVR and GIZ to address issues of crime, especially against women and children, aiming to capacitate CWP participants on violence prevention skills. In 2017, the partnership was formalized and an MOU was signed between COGTA, CSVR and GIZ. The partnership was piloted in Orange Farm, Tembisa, Iv Iv Ivory Park and Erasmus. The results of, from the pilot show that the program has reduced and in some cases prevented violence and crime against women and children in the pilot sites. It's evident from the pilot program that, firstly, many CWP participants have the appetite to do socially useful work, including violence prevention through the CWP. Secondly, that participation in the program resulted in increased levels of active citizenship amongst project participants. Thirdly, that participation in the program results in increased local stakeholder collaboration. And fourthly, that there are more referrals to existing service providers on issues related to substance abuse and gender violence. Example, uh, to Sanka and to SAP's victim empowerment uh, and to also to social workers. The, this skills development could represent one avenue for participants to contribute to the social good but also potentially exit the public employment program. Skills development would require interdepartmental collaboration between COGTA, Department of Public Works, Social Development, and Higher Education, and many others. And balancing budgets to meet dual needs of maximizing public employment program participants versus increasing the amounts on spent on skills development. There is, however, a need to increase opportunities for accredited skills development, focusing on social development and violence prevention through public employment programs, especially in communities that continue to be affected by the unequal distribution of mental health care facilities brought about by apartheid. CWP is currently unable to meet the original unintended target of providing one million work opportunities due to budget constraints. The, there is therefore an urgent need to source additional funding to assist the upscaling of work opportunities and increase the number of work days in the existing municipal sites, specific, specifically in wards where there is discernible poverty. Equally, there is an e urgent need to enhance CWP institutional capacity to ensure efficient and effective management. Going forward, we need to actively seek Firstly, opportunities to expand the social and economic impact and effectiveness of CWP while also expanding the number of work opportunities being provided. Secondly, collaboration with civil society and other stakeholders to improve our understanding. Thirdly, improve ways of documenting what works and in some cases also what does not work. And fourthly, opportunities to develop the skills of those working in these programs. Expanding and increasing the impact of public employment programs will require government, labor, business, and civil society to work together. At the job summit, President Ramaphosa made the point that, and I quote, countries that have succeeded in tackling economic challenges and social problems have had the benefit of getting all social partners to reach agreement on what needs to be done and to work together to ensure that it gets done. Countries like Ireland, Spain and the Netherlands have been successful in forging social accords in response to economic difficulty. Yet in South Africa with low levels of trust, weak confidence and heightened social tensions, we have neglected our greatest strength of, as a society, our ability to unite and work together. Because in, it was by working together that we managed to overcome apartheid. 
that we brought an end to an intractable conflict that had raged for generations and were able to write a democratic constitution that guarantees the equal rights of all." Close quote. Thank you again for the opportunity to address you today and we would appeal to all to proceed in this spirit, the spirit of unity, the spirit of building social cohesion, the spirit of building a social compact between government, labor, business, and civil society. Thank you very much and all of the best for your deliberations. Thank you.